Hi friends, this is Terry Squires with today's Nashville This Is Faith. I sat down with Kelly Crabb from the Crabb family and I caught up with her story. You won't want to miss her episode. Don't give up on what God is calling you to do. He hears your prayers and He will answer them. <music> Kelly Crabb is no stranger to the Christian music world. With having a long list of accomplishments during her vocal career, she has spent more than 15 years with her family, the Crab family, and during that time, they have received three Grammy nominations, 11 Dove Awards, 16 number one songs, and many more. Today, Kelly is touring with her daughters, Kelly Crab and the Bowling Sisters, and sharing God's love, grace, and music to remind others they can survive the struggles of life. This is her story. This is Today's Nashville. This is Faith. Kelly, it is so good to see you again. Thank you for coming on the show, Today's Nashville. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. So much has happened. So much. <laughs> I want to go back a little bit because sure. we talked a long time ago, but I want my friends and, and others to hear your story it's an amazing story of the, the bus crash yeah. when you were on tour. Can you just share a little bit that, and then we'll move on? Sure. So my family, we were traveling, singing, we were in singing ministry, and we were in 2010, we were traveling in North Carolina, normal day, one afternoon, and our bus hit a semi going 60 miles an hour, and we suffered some pretty severe injuries. I broke my back, I lost a vertebrae in my back. My daughter, who is now 20, was six and life flighted. And it was, we were off the road for almost a year. And the Lord, not one life was lost. I'll never forget seeing the footage. It was on the news. We were in Charlotte at the hospital. And I'll never forget the officer saying in the footage from the news footage that he expected several, uh, you know, lives to be lost. And miraculously, God spared us all. And it was a faith building moment, you know. It was one of those, I was much younger then, and I hadn't been through near as much then, but it was a faith building moment to have a daughter life lighted and to go through the experience of a broken back and be down for almost a year of trusting the Lord even when it doesn't make sense. It but must have been hard for you to be separated from your daughter. It was so it was one of the hardest moments in my life, but one of the moments that God became so real to me because even in that moment, I experienced His presence. So it forever changed me um, of how personal God is and how even when you don't have a like an eloquent prayer to say, you don't have time, He shows up. So it was a such, it was, it absolutely changed my faith. Now you are from a famous family, the Crab family. I am from the Crab family, yes. Let's go back a little bit and share what it was like growing up with all the crabs. Well, it was never dull, never boring. Lots of music, as you can imagine. And I always say, you know, we're bl we were blended family. And so it taught me when you travel and there's six kids and it's chaos a lot, you learn how to go with the flow and you learn about unity. And it was it molded me, honestly. That molded me. Those years molded me into the person that I am today. Where were you in the line? Right smack dab in the middle. <laughs> right in the middle. Kind of older than the twins, younger than Jason, um, older than Tara. So right in the middle. Did you all get along? For the most part, we really did. I mean, here's what we learned to do, and I don't know if this is good or bad. If you were having a moment, you just sort of go to your bunk and just sort of pray about it and 
you know, for the most part, it's you get over it. But we really did get along, and I think that's what made it so beautiful, is that unity is powerful. What about those years touring with them? Some of the best years of my life, again, made me who I am. All of that touring, you know, it's one thing to tour. It's another thing to tour and it be ministry because it really creates a bond. And it's so much fun, but it's bigger than you. You know what I mean? It was so much, there was a mission there. And that was to to spread the love of God. How old were you when you started? When we started touring full time, I was 17 years old. Oh, 17. Okay. So very young, very formative years and some of the best memories. Share a little bit. Share share some of those memories. You've how many Grammys that you I don't we've been nominated for two. And so, no, we were nominated for more than two, but I went to two of them. Um, I don't even, you know, it's been a and minute. Dove so I don't awards even, and Dove yeah. I don't even know the, the statistics anymore, but a lot of Dove Awards and, and so many neat things that we got to do together, Carnegie Hall and things like that, that, you know, um, that were just, we were from, we're from Beaverdam, Kentucky. We were a bunch of kind of, you know, country bumpkins, some would say kids and, we had this dream, and we felt like it was a God dream. And how did it start? I mean, how did you go from so Kentucky our parents and- were pastoring a church in Philpott, Kentucky, a little tiny country church, a beautiful little church, a sweet congregation, and we just started. The, we would all do the music, and um, it really started there. And my mom just has a great work ethic and a great business. She's sense. amazing. Yeah, she's got a great business sense. You know, some people are called to music, some are called to business. And she had sort of that, she was able to take it and kind of navigate, how do we make this work and make it legit? And she kind of, she did it. And then Gerald was such such a great songwriter and he wrote some amazing songs. So it's sort of that combo. And then all of us were just willing to go. And so it was It was a beautiful moment in my life and in time for us. Do you remember that time when you knew, okay, we've made it or we're, you know, this is our career, this is what we're going to do? Do you remember that time? I sort of do. It's all a little bit, it was so quick and there was, we were so busy. You know, I remember one October when I was probably 18 years old, we worked 30 days, lots of little churches, lots of revivals. I do remember getting to a place where it was like, oh, this is working and and we were getting to make records that we wanted to make and work with people and and just and I know this sounds so cliche when people say this but feeling so humbled that we actually got to do it that we actually kind of got to live this dream that we wanted to do of music and ministry how blessed to be able to say that was our heart's desire and the Lord gave it to us it's still very humbling it's a beautiful story did you ever miss out on like the High school events and yes, never went to a prom, didn't have the typical graduation. I missed out on a lot, but would not trade any of it for anything. No regrets. No regrets None. at all. Well, God has truly blessed you. We're going to talk more about that heartache. Yes. You know, when you family was split apart, because yeah. a lot of families go through with it. Yes, and um, go through it, and we're going to talk about that when we come back. Kelly, God has taken you through some struggles, some trials in your life. Uh, you went through a divorce, and uh, but He's doing amazing things in your life. Can you share with me what you went through? Absolutely. About three and a half, almost four years ago now, I went through a really unexpected divorce. Uh, we were in family ministry. You know, it was I there was no way for it to not be kind of public. Yeah. And it was just, I was very blindsided by it all, and it was shocking. And, you know, I sort of had to re-navigate my whole life, as anybody does when they go through a divorce. But I sort of had to decide what the girls and I would do concerning ministry, because we were all in ministry together. And the Lord's been so, so faithful to me. And it there's no way to really put into words how hard that is. I remember you going through that. It was embarrassing. It was shocking. It was, you know, it it tested my faith in ways that it had not been tested before because it was sometimes matters of the heart, I think, can be trickier with our faith walk. Um, We talked about the wreck and 
that was a little more black and white with my faith, even though it tested my faith. Um, I think when you go through matters of the heart and you try to navigate relationships that fail and that fall, it can be a little bit trickier, but the Lord has been beyond faithful and He's helped me. How do you walk through it though with the girls and how did they handle it? One of the, the first things that someone did, which was one of the best favors that has ever been done for me, was they gave me the card to a, a really good Christian therapist that she specializes in teenage girls. It was really a God moment. And they that's one of the first steps that I took as a parent. I knew that it was going to be, I was so traumatized by what I was going through that I knew that it they needed someone else, a professional that could help me help them. And I didn't, I cannot emphasize how, what a God thing that has been for our lives to have this relationship with this amazing woman who is so full of the Word of God, and she has helped them navigate it. And that's been one of the best things that I ever chose to do as a parent. So going from being married to a single parent, yeah, what was that like? Beyond what, that was the one of the scariest things that I've ever experienced because they were, you know, my middle one was in her senior year of high school. My youngest one was just about to begin high school. And my oldest one was about 20, 21 years old. And it was so incredibly hard. And then we also made this decision to stay in ministry. So they were having to get up on stage and sing and, and you know, encourage other people during the darkest time of their lives. And there was a lot of guilt that maybe came with that of, is this too much? And it was being a single parent, my heart truly goes out to single parents in a way. I used to be one. Yes. Okay. So my empathy towards that is so different. I could have never understood that. And now I see single parents and I'm like, what warriors they are. The ones that are really digging in and doing it to the best of their ability. We don't give them enough credit. But don't you love how God just steps right in yeah. and takes care of everything? And people yes. will ask you, how did you get through? How did you get there? And it's only God. Only God. Only God. Only God. And He helps you find a strength that you didn't know you had. The Bible says His strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. And so it's funny that at your most weak moment, you really find a strength like you've never known. And He kind of becomes, you learn that you can truly, you can totally stand on Him and His Word. And it's enough. It's miraculous to look now as I've sort of come through some of the hardest moments of it all and to see that it was it was him. He was Every enough. step. He was enough. And you always wonder, how am I going to do this? Boom, it gets done. It gets done. He makes then, a way. And then another situation comes up. How am I going to do that? He's right there. He shows up every single time. It's He is enough. And we I've sang that, I sang that for many years and said it for many years. But then I had to really, I was required to really, really live it. And you have to make up your mind. Do you believe it or not? Do you believe it even when your heart's broken? Do you believe it when you cry yourself to sleep? He's still enough. He will make a way. So as you look back from the time you started the divorce until where you are now, how has Kelly changed? I'm not even the same. I don't even recognize myself. I'm not the same person at all. And... It's horrible sometimes to think you have to go through such hardships to sort of figure out who you really are. But the, the Lord promises that He will use even the things that the enemy thinks will destroy us for our good, for His glory. I would have never chosen the road that we had to go down. But again, I have no regrets. I'm just so thankful. And I'm somehow happier than I ever thought I could be somehow more content than I ever thought I could be. And I'm, I'm more sure of the goodness of God than I've ever been in my life. So I'm grateful. And the girls, they're doing great? They're doing so well. They have, they're wise beyond their years. Their talent is, you know, I'm proud of their talent, but I'm so proud of their wisdom. And they've, in a moment where those girls could have just walked away and no one would have blamed them, and kind of walked out into rebellion, they somehow didn't. And I take no credit for that. It's God. They didn't question their faith? They may have questioned it quietly, but they have chosen to sort of stay the course even when they were questioning. 
They've chosen to sort of stay committed even when maybe they wanted to walk away. And I, the Bible says His mercies are new every morning. I believe He's just like given us an extra dose every morning of mercy to sort of navigate the troubled waters of what we've walked through. And I give God all the glory. God is a God of restoration. He is. And He loves to give us. Yes. And He gave you a new husband. He did, surprisingly and unexpectedly. And it's been one of the most beautiful moments of my life. Um, I saw pictures of your wedding. Yes. He's, he, we're friends. He loves with his actions. I always say not words. And it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And, you know, when you have kids, your prayer and your heart is, is that they will be able to rejoice in it with you. And they have. Those girls have just been so supportive. They sang at our wedding. And our whole wedding reception, the gift was the music from a good friend of mine, Blaine, and the girls, and they had planned every song, all of my favorite songs. And just to have them celebrate this moment with me has meant the world to me, and it's truly an answer to prayer. And you're getting ready to celebrate your first uh, year yeah, anniversary. Our first anniversary, and we're so excited. And again, it's just been, I'll never forget, Terry, when I was sort of still in the, the thick of it, the trenches of the trying to heal from everything. And I'll never forget one night I was sort of praying, and I was like, oh, this I was just sort of frustrated and I sort of said, this is always, it's broken. There's no going back because sometimes there's no fixing it the way it was before. And I remember my frustration of just sort of like, God, this was not what I had envisioned for my life. And I'll never forget, I felt the Lord sort of speak to my heart and say, why do you keep saying it's broken? Because I can fix it the way it needs to be fixed. And just because it's not what you pictured, doesn't mean your life won't be beautiful again. Sort of felt that. And now that I'm sitting here in this moment in this new marriage, and my life's really beautiful, more beautiful than I ever could have hoped for, I get it. And he's taken you on a new path, and we're going to talk about it when we come back. Kelly, the Lord is taking you on a new journey. It's a, an exciting one. Yes, he has. It's funny when everything changed, the ministry has shifted a little bit too. And even your kind of what sets your heart on fire is shifted in a way. Um, so I've always spoken a little bit and done some women's events. But I think after just living through such pain that I have found so many women have a similar story. Um, it's been really interesting. I've been able to do a lot of women's events and speak and encourage. I feel very called to encourage people. And so we've done a lot of that. Is it mostly on like being a single parent, divorce? I think anything? it's mostly, mostly the divorce, just going through something that I think especially women in church don't foresee happening in their lives. You know, that it was, it's, no one goes to church and serves God and thinks, you know, I'll probably go through a divorce. And to be able to sort of understand that God can still use you and that your life's not over and that maybe it's just beginning. And that even, even though it failed, you don't have to live with failure hanging over your door and that being what you refer to yourself. And it's certainly not what God refers to you as. And so that's kind of my heart right now is to sort of help encourage a lot of women that have had their heart broken just to you know, honest about it, that have had their heart broken and their world kind of turned and they didn't see it coming. Yeah, I think a lot of us, you know, we sit there and it's like, how could God use me now? Yeah. You know, I'm a failure. I failed yeah. at this. But God can you? I mean, you look at all the women in the Bible that God has used. Yes. They were all outcasts. They were all, you know, had trials and struggles and failures. Yeah. Yes. But that's who God loves to use. It is who God loves to use. And you know, one of the things that has changed me and wrecked me in the best way is that I was at my very worst when I went through all of that. And I kind of spent my whole life trying to be good. You know, I was never one of these that pushed every boundary. It's just not my nature. And I spent my whole life thinking, you know, I never think I never thought I was that extraordinary necessarily, but I'll be good. And so God will use me. And to have been through the worst, and I saw the worst of me, and I know God saw it, and for Him still to be available to use me 
has been life changing in the best way. And I hope to be able to convey that to other women. Oh, I'm sure you are. That even when you're at your worst, God doesn't love you any less. He's so patient. And even if you fail and even if your life did not live up to what you thought it was going to live up to, He can absolutely still exceed what your hope is for your own life. And He can blow your mind in the best way possible. You know, He's taken you and your daughters on the road. You're performing, touring. Yes. Let's talk about what He's doing there. So my heart is, you know, what I just said about um, encouraging women and but my girls' hearts, their hearts are music through and through. God, and amazing voices. Thank you. And they are, they have that sibling harmony and such a love for, they write and they play instruments. And so they are kind of stepping into that season of their, it's, it's reminiscent of when I was with my family, the Crab family and those early years. And it's reminiscent of what I'm seeing in them because they're finding themselves musically. They're at the ages now where they're, they're figuring it out on their own and they're uh, digging in. And it's so cool to watch as a mom who loves music and I've spent my life in music. I would have never dreamed they would all three be so all about the music. I'm so, I would have been proud either way, you you know, know, they're together. together. And there's something about when they sing together, they have that true sibling harmony. Uh, We have a natural alto, a natural soprano, and then the oldest one's sort of naturally in the middle. And only God could have done it. So having a front row seat seat to that makes me feel more blessed than anybody in the whole world. And it's Kelly Crabb and the Bowling Sisters. And the Bowling Sisters. And Bowling Sisters. Yep. And so I sing less and less. I still love to sing. I will always love to sing. But they're taking a little bit more of, you know, the singing. And I'm happy. So are you ministering to the women and they come and sing or are you doing concerts? We sing some together. So the girls and I do some singing together. And then one of my favorite, you know, I share, you know, I'll share my heart. But one of my favorite moments of the night is when I can say, okay, girls, take it. Step out and they play the guitars and they sing and they do their thing as the three sisters. It's beautiful. It's beautiful to watch. And um, I love that they're growing in that. Is there any memory or story that you can think of of a woman that after you spoke or saying that just touched your heart or came up and her life was completely changed is there anybody that stands out on that well there's been honestly when you're that I've been pretty open about what I've gone through and so there's been several several stories but I've definitely had one or two that were going through that at about the same time that have just said you know because you didn't give up And because you were so vocal about refusing to give up, I didn't give up either. I've had several pastor's wives that have gone through very similar stories to mine. And they thought God was through with them. And they made up their mind that even if they're not a pastor's wife anymore, that they had made up their mind to continue to stay in church and continue to serve God. And there have been so many women that have reached out to me that it's honestly been a little bit overwhelming in a good way. But several that have said, you know what, thank you for not giving up and thank you for publicly not giving up because I felt like sometimes you were saying what I wished I could say and you have encouraged me through my journey as well. And somebody's listening to you right now. Uh, What would you say to her? I would say don't give up. I would say that the the journey really starts internally in, in spite of what you're going through. It's just there has to be something in you that you make up your mind that God is for you no matter who's next to you. That don't believe the lie that God is only for you if you're in a certain relationship, if you're in a certain workplace, if you're God is for you when you're sitting alone at a doctor's office. God is for you if you're in a hospital bed alone. God is for you. This is an individual thing. And it's not just when we're in church on Sunday. He is a he is a personal God, and He's for you. So don't give up. What's next for you? Where are you going to be in the future with the with your girls? And are you touring? We're and- touring quite a bit. I hope many more women's events. That's my heart right now. I'm really wanting to write a devotion devotional very soon. I wrote a book about a year after my journey, and I'm hoping to do another book in the future. We have new music coming out, so it's a lot's happening, but we're, we're so excited. Where can I find you? Kelly Crab and the Bowling Sisters.com. Okay. Two Bs. 
All right, Kelly, thank you so much. Thank Such you. a blessing to see thank you, you again. Thank you, good to see you. My friend, are you struggling? And you're wondering why you're going through the situation that you're going through. God is standing right beside you. Trust Him, take His hand, believe in Him, He'll get you through. This is today's Nashville, this is Faith. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.